If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. So we'll have introduction first. We we'll start with project structures. So what are the project structures in SAP project systems? First, we'll take you through that. Then how do you go about defining the project structure? That is second, identifying the requirements for structures. Then what is work breakdown structure, WBS? And what are activities? So these will be covered in the structures session. So if anyone has uh, used MS project or a project management software, they will be aware of what is a WBS, work breakdown structure or activities. So, so I was talking about if in project, when we create a project, how do you define a WBS structure? And then we will see uh, the features of WBS structure and then how to create the WBS structure. What is difference between operative WBS structure and standard WBS structure that we will see. Then we will go in a next session in the activities. So how do you detail out the activities, what is activity, what is network. We look at the configuration side also. And in each session, we will do system uh, demo as well, transactions, as well as we will also done on the configuration side whenever it is the relevant, that area, we will learn from the configuration side as well. So we will do activities, networks, how to do configuration for networks, what are the different types of activities and when to use which one that we will learn. And there's another feature called milestones. So what are those milestones and how to use them that we will see. But then the course contains after that about we'll talk about versions, what are project versions. Then important topic in uh, PS is scheduling. So what we'll do is uh, how to do the project scheduling, what are the different types of scheduling used and in WBS scheduling and activities scheduling. So what are the configuration required, how the data is maintained and how to update the schedule, whether manual scheduling and how when to use automatic scheduling that we will see. Then for resources, there are project in the project, there are capacities, there are work centers which we use. So how to go about planning those work centers and looking at capacity reports and uh, how to see the if some of the work centers are overloaded, how we do go about doing the capacity leveling. Then within the date scheduling, we have to do progress tracking. So we look at that progress tracking. Uh, for, uh, there is another integration with MM, with material management for procurement. So that is called procurement management, Roman. So we look at that feature. Then uh, cost and budget tracking. So if there are some people from finance who have used internal orders and they have used the budget feature. So this, that is similar over here again in PS uh, project system. So how do you go about doing uh, cost planning? There are different types of cost planning used in PS. That there is direct cost planning, then easy cost planning is there, then automatic cost planning using networks activities we look at the configuration side of the cost planning also. Apart from cost, if there are customer projects, then you need to do revenue planning. So we'll look at how you integrate uh, with the SD side, sales and distribution side, and do revenue planning. Then uh, spoke about budget uh, uh, to keep active control on how much is the cost incurred versus the planned budget. So there is this budget feature and availability control where the system uh, 
uh, gives warning messages or error messages depending on the configuration we do in the uh, background at what percentage system should warn the users that now you are exceeding budget at maybe at 90 percent we can do that when there is 100 percent spent then the system should stop doing further transactions like for the EO creation or goods received creation so that you will have a look then material management how the mm part gets linked to the project systems how you assign the material components to the project mm -hmm. how you do the processing of uh, purchase requisition purchase order and uh, uh, this is for goods materials and even you can do for services so for services how you can procure the services and when the services are being performed how you keep track of how much services have been rendered by the customer how you do that entry service entry sheet then there is a approval process for the service entry sheet uh, so how do you do that that we have a look and then actual costs so we spoke about planning cost planning but what are the time that the costs are going to actually get hit on to the project so we look at the different types of actual cost incurred in a project so this primarily happens during the execution phase so we will also go and look at what is the project life cycle uh, in uh, project management um, terminology so we'll have a look at that and when is the execution phase how the actual costs get hit in the project be it through purchase order against uh, goods received against a purchase order or activity confirmation or there can be journal entries in fi uh, against the wbs elements or network activities when the actual cost uh, are posted against projects then similarly about so revenues so when uh, the sales order the billing is performed you get actual revenues against the wbs in case the sales order is linked to the wbs element then we we'll look at different billing methods and uh, then there can be also uh, some down payment involved uh, with milestone billing order what is milestone billing what is resource related billing we'll have a look at that then there are some period and activities usually done at month end most of the activities some activities can be done at the year end so we will look at those type of activities so primarily there are uh, the settlement then forecast progress analysis these type of activities are done that in the month and activities and also we look at reports now this reports it doesn't mean that we look only at towards the end but even during uh, doing other modules we we'll look at some of these reports so that we understand what is the impact of uh, doing different sort of transactions and how you can immediately look at that impact in the report side so there are different types of reports in ps structure reports procurement reports cost reports budget reports actual cost reports then progress reports we will have a look at those types of reports as well so this was the course content which we will be covering over the next couple of weeks in this training now I'll just go through the actual uh, presentation and we'll start from the project structure module first. Okay, so you're able to see the screen, right? So, yeah, Khalid, we are able to see. Okay. Yes, yes. So SAP project system. Okay, so we'll just start a uh, disclaimer. So there are copyright laws. So not supposed to reproduce, store, or introduce into a retrieval system or transmit 
in any form or by any means. So our agenda is we'll go through the SAP project system, three structures in this module, uh, sub module, and then we'll also see how do we identify the requirements for structures in the SAP project system. Okay, so just let us start with something. Uh, what is a project? What is the definition of a project? See, we are all, we are SAP consultants and we all know that we all work on projects, correct? So most of the time, uh, how do you classify whether this is project work or this is non-project work? or typically we call it operations, yeah? So uh, there is a differentiation how you classify it into whether it is a project or not. So for project, these are the characteristics it should have. Any of these characteristics that we we'll call it a project. So generally projects are complex, unique, have high degree of risk, and important is they have precise goals that okay we want to do we want to achieve something with this project which are agreed by you and the ordering party now it could be an internal project as well the ordering party could be internal as well it's not necessarily uh, to be an external party then there is a limited duration it is not endless it has a limited duration and there are cost constraints and there will be a cost involved as well as capacity involved. Capacity here could be people or could be machinery, uh, materials, etc. Uh, while uh, doing this project work, they are also subject to certain quality requirements that you need to achieve do the work at a particular quality, you need to meet those quality standards as well. Then usually these project works are of strategic importance for company that that carrying, uh, for the company which is carrying uh, the project work out. So normally any project we do, let's say any customer we have, we do a project, it will be the implementation project, a city implementation project, or there is a conversion project conversion to S4 HANA. So you see in those projects, typically all these properties, these qualities will be there so that it just gets classified in a project. Normally, if we are in the support work, so the support work, if it is uh, uh, AMS type of work, that uh, doesn't qualify mostly into a project because that is operational work, that is routine works. They sometimes they will have a duration, but that will be um, uh, extendable sort of duration. But in project, most of the project work, it's not extendable. That you need to, okay, you have got six months to go live. So it means we have to achieve, uh, you, you've been given a particular scope. Okay, these are the modules, sub modules, which we want to implement. Uh, these are how many company ports you've got, how many plants you've got, and you need to do this implementation with these number of resources. So that is what a project involves. So any questions on this slide? Hello? No, Khaled. So clear everybody about what is a project? And you yeah. Can take, yes. Uh, yeah. You can take examples of any our day-to-day -day lives also. I gave you examples of SCP project because all of us are working in SCP side. But anything like let's say a new, uh, like this metro uh, getting created, huh? uh, in our cities, or even a new bridge getting created, uh, or you can say any uh, important task which we carry out, let's say our marriage, okay, that is also 
so you can consider it as a project because there is a budget involved there is a time you have uh, in mind okay i want to do it this in this period and what you have um dura uh, limited duration cost constraints are there you need to meet uh, quality requirements and you have goals so all these things are also in in, in our regular life also there are certain uh, times that uh, those are projects which you work on so just think from that point of view as well it's not only work related but sometimes our personal life also there could be projects involved in that uh, college shrikant here yes. uh, from that perspective so we do also have um, internal order accounting which caters to the similar needs right yes. so how, how this is going to be very different from that uh, will you be yes, yes. Uh, very giving that question. understanding yes yes very good question see internal that is where i spoke uh, i just touched on that didn't uh, speak in detail that you uh, remember in internal order also we have some type of cost planning we have some type of budgeting control also in internal orders right yes 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 so now internal order and uh, project system see if we have very small projects which doesn't need a uh, project scheduling that is one feature see i took you through uh, the course contents right one slide about course contents yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, project scheduling is big like let's say these are big projects that involve hundreds of activities hmm? hundreds of tasks are involved Uh, and okay. those tasks are linked to each other there are dependencies in the tasks okay you need to monitor those tasks also like in uh, let's just take a sap project also there are so many tasks and so many people involved in the project manager if you see even the team leads they have to manage that this task is being done in the right time so that the next task which is being done by maybe by a different group will be done at the in the right schedule correct so yeah. these things are not possible with internal orders right in internal order is a cost object where you, okay you just go and uh, you have a budget let's say you put a 10 lakh rupees budget to that internal order and you keep track of your purchases or your uh, other cost bookings onto that internal order at the most we have the budget control over there so for the small types of events or event tracking or small type of project yes we can use internal order but when the project size is huge you need to keep track of um the scheduling uh, because there are so many activities involved if you want to keep track of uh, let's say material requirements you have materials requirement planning which is mrp uh, the pp folks and the mm folks they know what is material requirement planning there are hundreds of materials and you want to plan okay this material when i need this how much quantity i need this so those features are not possible with internal order that you would have to use project system for that So, so Kali, in that case, we can assume that uh, the project system caters uh, the complete internal order accounting and more than that. Yes, yes, it will. It will. See, yeah. We, uh, if you, I'll when we go into further slides, when we talk about WBS structure and all, I'll explain to you further. One WBS element. There can be multiple WBS elements in one project. but one wbs element is equivalent because each wbs element also is a cost object so that is equivalent to one internal order okay so that is where if you, if you, it's a small project uh, you don't need to keep track of schedule materials planning also you don't need to do that time internal order will be sufficient that is that will suffice but when there is complex projects involved then you will need 
SAP project systems PS model. Okay. Hello. Yeah, Khalid. Thank oh. you. Oh. Yeah. So again, uh, uh, definition of a project. So generally part of internal processes of company, you want to keep uh, able to control the tasks, all the tasks in project execution. Then we need an organization form that is specific to a project and which is shared by all departments involved. Uh, to be able to carry out a project in its entirety, the project goals must be precisely described and project activities to be carried out must be structured. So this is about structuring of the project. This is where the WBS work breakdown structure will help us. So we'll see that in the subsequent slides. Clearly and unambiguously structured project is the basis for its planning, monitoring, control and success. So why is the project structuring so important? Because this, the project structuring will become the basis for the cost, schedule planning, then monitoring of the project, control of the project, cost and schedule, and then of course the success of the project. So structuring of the project. So how do you structure the project? First is according to how it is organized. And this also it can be done according to what are the processes involved in the project. I just take some examples for this. Okay, there are some more slides. So I'll go to project structuring just a few slides afterwards. So that one question which we had about internal order versus project systems. So SAP project offers us quite a few functionalities on top of what we get in internal order. First is this structuring, project structuring. Time scheduling, the scheduling feature, which we talked about. This is also very important in, a, in project management. Cost and revenue planning. At a very high level, we can do cost and revenue planning and budgeting in internal order, but PS will offer you more, uh, especially in the cost revenue planning, it will offer us more methods of doing the cost planning. Uh, procurement of materials and services. So here, the planning of materials, um, and services then for materials, even the MRP, material requirement planning, will be helpful in project management. You can plan services for material uh, in uh, PS, but, uh, but in internal order, this will be again account assigned services. So that is not uh, very much user friendly. Uh, then when you're performing the activities, so you can, uh, there's a transaction called confirmation of the project activities, which gives us in the reporting site is how much work has been completed, how much percentage of work has been completed. So that will come here. But then there is billing involved. How do you do uh, billing? This is applicable for the customer projects then the project progress analysis, period and closing, and as well as reporting. So these are the features which the SAP project system offers us. Now SAP project system PS module is highly integrated module with almost many modules in SAP. So primary integration, it is part with CEO controlling, FI, finance. Of course, you need to purchase materials and services. So it is integrated with plant maintenance, 
includes the customer projects, sales order involved, and query quotation. So that time, US is integrated with the sales distribution. If there are capital investment capex projects, and you want to uh, keep track of those projects as investment programs, then you have a IM another module, investment module, investment management module. So that is integrated with the PS. Then we have got HR module, HCM it is called. So it is integrated with this HCM module. In here, the employees you can actually assign those employees as um, resources in the project system. That is how the integration happens. Then the PP module, uh, production planning module. Now the MRP part of uh, that you can utilize. Apart from that, sometimes the production, if it is made to order, uh, type of production, which is called MTO, uh, then we use project systems to trigger the production orders. Um, so the, in that case, the PP module will also come. In the normal production that is called made to stock. So that time the project system doesn't come into the picture. But if it is as per a particular order, then you want to produce a uh, certain uh, FG, uh, finished good. But then there is a linkage with the production planning and of course controlling because in the CO side you have your cost versions, you have activity types, cost elements, uh, settlement. So by that CO is also integrated with the project system module. Any questions on this slide? No, Carl. So I'll take you to this next slide. One second. Kali, the, uh, does it not have any integration with customer service? If, for example, if uh, any equipment built by a company, then later my customer may report any issues. Okay, see, there is an integration with plant maintenance. So in case of customer service, if you want to integrate with SAP project system that is also possible. Okay, but yes, we not don't see much integration uh, or requirement of integrating uh, customer service module. I have not seen uh, much uh, uh, business cases for integrating that. But technically, there is a possibility in plant maintenance. If you see here. Uh, sometimes they have these uh, uh, big projects like shutdown projects, plant shutdown projects or maintenance projects uh, where, is, where there is a major overhaul. That is the time they use the plant maintenance in integration with the project system. Hello? Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Kali, that is within. Yeah, that is within the organization, right? Correct. The plant yeah, maintenance. The correct. Correct. Right. Maybe, for example, a manufacturing company they build a big equipment at customer there at customer end. Maybe you take some BHL. They supplied a turbine to NTPC, right? So maybe after installation, they might be face some issues. Then they report the issues to BHL, right? Hmm. Yeah. So in that case, um, so while raising any, 
again uh, how they handle complaints if they handle via customer service they, it will be indicated or else they need to track differently you got it yes <clears throat> just uh, i think let us have a 10 15 minutes break i think i'm getting some issue with my laptop i'll have to restart it okay so we were talking about project structuring so in the project system we have two types of structures one is wbs structure which is work breakdown structures we short we call it wbs and the others is networks. So we will see what is WBS, what is networks, but primarily we will, it's not that we can avoid WBS element in each project, we will need WBS structures. Now, whether using networks, networks has got activities underneath it. Okay, activities are part of a network. So, whether we need networks or not, in some projects, it could be possible that there is no, uh, not a need of a network. So, we will see how do you find out, how do you decide whether this project I should have networks or I should not have networks. Okay. So that we'll see in some later slides. Let me first explain you about WBS structure and how we go about defining WBS structure. Um, and then how to create that WBS structure in the SAP system. So as we saw in another earlier screen, this project structure is very important and the, having or creating the correct project structure is very important because it constitutes for the other functions like planning, scheduling, analyzing the project relevant data the WBS structure, the project structure, which includes WBS as well as network is going to become the basis for that. So that is why it is very important. So again, this statement confirms that, that SAP PS functionalities, if you want to use them, then the coherent and appropriate structures have to be first built in the system. They constitute the basis for planning and analyzing all project relevant data in SAP. Now these two structures, which is WBS and networks. Now, when we should create that, how we should create that, we'll have a look at that. So they have their own set of functionalities, WBS and networks, they have their own functionalities, set of functionalities. Then depending on business specific requirements, as I was saying, we need to determine whether you need WBS network structure or both. Okay. But the thing WBS structure will be a must in most of the situations. Okay. In some situations, you need both. In very rare situations, only WBS. Only a network structure will be required. I, I, I'll uh, give you some examples later on for this as well, for all of these situations. Now, when we do WBS structure, so what are the features available with WBS structure? So we can carry out account uh, we can carry out cost planning. There are a few cost planning methods which we can carry out using WBS. And there are more methods for network activities. We'll have a look at that. You can do a current assignment of purchase orders or sales orders. You can do carry out revenue planning, billing, invoicing. Then 
budget and budget ability control. Uh, as I was telling, but one WBS element is equivalent is like one internal order. So budget and budget availability control is done at a WBS element in SAPS. Uh, then material stock management. Those who are from MM side, uh, they know that you in MM you manage stock of materials, how many quantity and what value is available in a plant. Okay. Now that stock management sometimes has to be done at a project level. In project as in in SAP language, it is actually WBS element. So at a WBS element for a particular project, also you can manage stock quantity as well as its cost of the material. Now, this is required in certain, what happens is if you procure for a plant, some materials for a plant, but you need uh, this material is specific for a particular project, which is required for a particular project. And then if that material uh, is used by some other project, then this project, which has called for that material will suffer they will not get the, that material at the right time. So that is why what they do in SAP is they manage that stock at a WBS level. Means when it comes into the plant, they will transfer or do the goods received of that material at the WBS element level. So that is why in the WBS feature, it's saying material stock management is also possible at WBS element. Now, when this is done and how to make it happen, we will see when we go into the systems. There is something called project stock. Just remember that. So that will uh, make this happen, material stock management at WBS element. Then period and closing activities, like settlement of the project cost, to other receivers, again, that is possible with the WBS element, and you can do reporting, cost reporting, structure reporting at WBS element level. Now, let me go to WBS element part. Khalid, uh, what is that account documents in, in the previous slide? Uh, those are POs or Purchase orders or one millisecond. Huh? This one you're talking, right? So you can do purchase orders account assigned to WBS element. Even uh, some other uh, like outline agreements, also you can have it account assigned to WBS element. Basically, it is yeah, yeah, even yeah, I got it. In in sales order also, item level we will assign. Correct, correct. Oh. Let me go to now WS element. And okay, now we go to WS structure. I'll take you through WBS structure, then I'll take you to the system and I will show you how we do it in the system, okay? So, again, so uh, many WBS structure, everything together, it is called a WBS structure. Each one of those WBS element, let me see if I have a slide here for that. Okay, this one. Let's say I have got one project, okay? And the project, uh, all these boxes, one of all these- Alid, you are not sharing your screen. Not sharing, one second, one second, I'm so sorry. Share again. It was shared, I think it may have got Okay. Uh, is it visible? No, yeah. Okay. Let me just see if I missed anything to show. Okay. So till here, 
one minute. Huh? Okay. So project structure, we all covered, right? This is. Yes, we covered this. Covered this. Now I am going to go into WBS structure. Okay. And start this. Okay, I'll share the screen. Slide show. Okay. So we are looking at WBS structures. So we'll see what makes up a WBA structure and how do you define a WBA structure? So there are two ways. You can have more ways of doing that. One is deliverable based. So in projects, if there are, let's say 10 deliverables and you want to organize the WBA structure based on the deliverables, the outputs basically. So that is one WBA structure we can have. Another is can be phase based, like in a project, there can be multiple phases. If I'm, uh, let's say, making one uh, building uh, apartment complex, so there can be multiple phases. Let's say each four or five building blocks, I'm going to make one phase out of it. And let's say I've got three phases in this uh, commercial, in this uh, building complex, then I can make phase one, phase two, phase three. And then each phase, uh, I can even further split it up in the WBS structure. That is one way of doing it. Even in project management, if you see from the PMP, if we have taken or even the activate methodology in SAP, you have phases. One phase is, first is initiation. Then you have planning phase, you have execution phase, you have monitoring phase and project closing phase. So that type of phases also can use in WBS structure creation. So then we'll see uh, how to go about creating WBS elements. And then what are the different fields available in WBS elements? We'll just see. I'll just take you through one picture first for WBS structure so that it is more clear before we go into this. Okay. This is one example of a WBS structure. Now, each gray box over here is one WBS element. Okay, So by itself, each one of these WBS element can be a cost object by itself. Okay, Like one internal, it can be one internal order. But this is arranged in a structure or a tree format. That is why it is called structure format. WBS structure, that is why it is called. Now, in here, like let's say this is a hot air circulating rotor. This is the end product. The project is also called that. I am preparing that. Now, in here, there they have uh, divided this into uh, these are like uh, not exactly deliverables. These are like phases because zigs and fixtures, uh, there's planning phase, there is engineering phase. Okay, so these are like on a phase basis uh, inside for rotor manufacturing. This could be a, the different phases. But then within zigs and fixtures, you can break it down further. Okay, I'll break it down into engineering and production. For engineering, I break it down into three. Okay, engineering, I need to do engineering for rotor shaft, rotor blades, controls. And you can further break it down to whatever level of detail we want, we can break it down to that level of detail. But usually in uh, maximum projects, we have got about five to six level of WBS elements. Max, most of the projects will have only four level um, of WBS structure. In this picture, if you see, there are 
how many levels are there here? Hello? Four. <coughs> Four. Correct. Which is the level one? Hot air. Hot air. Yes, absolutely correct. So this is level one WBS element. These are level two WBS elements. These pictures, planning, engineering are level two WBS elements. These are level three. Now it is not necessary that all the WBS elements should be at end at the same level. Like here, if you see planning has ended at level two. Engineering, this branch has ended at level three. The engineering one. Now this branch, jigs and fixtures, has gone till level four. Correct? So not all have come till level four. Some have stopped at level three. Some have only stopped at level two. Correct? Got it? So not necessary that they should all go to the, the last, to the level. Everybody has to have the same level. Not It is not necessary. Okay. So this is how we can go about making a WBS structure. Any questions on this? Um, see, Khalid, see, in this, uh, okay, we, we are uh, considering only deliverables. So, for example, um, the ma material procurement is there. That not need to be covered here? No, right? So, okay. Not necessary. What we can yeah. do within engineering, or let's say production. Now production, there are three parts. Mechanics, electronics, and hydraulics. So we may say, okay, these are the electronics materials I'm going to procure. In hydraulics, I'm going to procure materials for the hydraulics part. Again, for mechanics part, I'm going to procure materials here. So you don't need separate WBS element for that. But in some projects, there may be WBS element for procurement separately may be possible, it is not. So it is actually the project managers, how they want to structure their projects. Okay. Okay. Um, see, um, Khalid, if uh, any company is building a <clears throat> big equipment, maybe you will take engineer to order, right? So there will be many assemblies, right? So each each assembly do we need to show as a structure here? For example, it consists maybe five different assemblies. So that will come under only production or? See, those five assemblies could be separate WS elements. In case they want to do cost planning separately for that, in case they want to do keep stock, uh, we saw project stock, right? If they want to maintain yeah. stock of that separately uh, of each assembly, then they can have that way that each uh, assembly is a separate WBS element. It is possible. Okay. If they want to keep budget also for each assembly, Keep track of that budget, okay, whether it is going beyond budget, beyond schedule, then they can have WBS, separate WBS for each one of those. Okay, got it. Now, we saw this, the WBS, we can make it either deliverable based, like in this case, an assembly can be one deliverable. Right, one assembly, then another one that can be one delivery or phase based that we can see. Now, in this case, these are actually phases, these are not uh, deliverables, planning, engineering. These are phases actually. Now, there can be mix. In this case, actually, it is a mix, a mix of deliverable and phases. Not necessarily it has to follow only phase based or only delivery based. It can be mixed as per the convenience and uh, how the project manager 
wants to plan the project and look at uh, monitor the project they can make their own structures so but this is at a uh, high level that uh, structures we can use deliverable based or phase based or it can even be a mix of both now let me just take you through some of the important features of uh, WBS. We covered some of this, but again, we'll just reiterate, okay? That WBS is a model of a project that organizes project tasks into a hierarchy. It's a tree structure, hierarchy structure. Then it is functional basis for further planning steps in a project. For example, process planning, cost planning, schedule planning, capacity planning, costing, as well as project control. Now process planning, this, your activities, network activities, relationship, like which activity comes first, which one happens afterwards. We'll see that in later slides in the activity submodule. So for that, as I was telling, WBS is essential. Without WBS, we normally don't, cannot use activities, okay? Then WBS, it gives you a clear picture of the project and facilitates the coordination and implementation of the project from management standpoint. It shows the work involved in a project, okay? So WBS, looking at the WBS structure, you should be able to know, okay, what is the work involved in a project? So normally, this WBS structure will be not created by the project manager alone. He will involve the team leads and the team members who are working on the project because they know the nitty gritties and the intricacies. What is required? What are the tasks required? What are how much time it will take? Uh, uh, usually, you, you, you have optimistic, pessimistic, those type of schedules, but then you use whatever, what is the realistic time schedule, how much duration each of the activities will take, what are the dependencies. I need to finish a particular activity before another one can happen. Uh, let's say I'm taking construction, then I need to do actually first bricks works. I need to make the wall. I, then I need to do the plastering. Then only I can do painting. Maybe I'll have to wait for one week after the plaster is over it to, it to get dry. Then only I can do painting. Within painting, if I need to do two, three coats of painting, so how much? the first quote will take and then second quote how many, how many days it will take and so on so that is in activities that is the process planning in this case uh, we saw this before now wbs what are the functionalities with wbs elements I will... so what makes up a wbs structure how do you go about making a wbs structure so you need to have the objectives of the wbs structure so the main objectives of wbs are to split the project into manageable units so it is a breakdown of the project you break it down into manageable units small units and then you have so that you can schedule those that of that unit small unit of the how much time it will take and how much cost it will incur so that is why the importance of ws structure that you want you want to split the project break the project down into manageable units then ws divides the project step by step into structure elements so these are called work breakdown structure elements or in short ws elements in project system each WBS element is the result of this splitting. Now we saw this, we can have WBS created with the various viewpoints by phase, logic or process oriented, by function, function oriented or by object. My object here is deliverable. What are the deliverables in that project? Okay, it's a, let's say it's, uh, we saw that example, that rotor, that is actually, the deliverable or um, object 
phase i give you an example hmm? like uh, procurement can be one phase execution is one phase project uh, so planning is one phase closing is one phase and so on can somebody give me a function oriented example of a function um this structure i want to make it um, function oriented same like that can, we have engineering or different module wise yes very good in this picture we saw planning engineering these are different functions or departments you can call it hmm? different departments in a in a company like that you can make let's say you have finance department so by finance you have engineering planning you have procurement you have production hmm? so like that also you can uh, make your wbs structure okay got it yes yeah okay uh, what is the take uh, karit can you give one example for object oriented see object is deliverable oriented okay i can tell you now let's say i am making one or uh, this rotor example okay uh, let's say let's take a simple example of that um let's say i have a car okay so car i can break it down okay it into chassis i can make it maybe the steering wheel i can have um the other finishing items i can have the wheels tires seats and all that within that i can break it down okay the chassis section what i'll have so those are all deliverables or those are objects which i have in my uh, project of car correct yeah got it understood so that is deliverable based like okay each uh, wbs you are going to get something out of it could be uh, let's say in, when you are doing assemblies so assembly 1 2 3 4 those can be wbs elements here then further break it down into uh, more details a uh, construction also can we take like pillars roof correct house. sir that is also a very good example even you can have construction if you have building let's say you have one building okay uh, then we can have floors uh, like first is the foundation okay uh, footing uh, plinth work then you have the uh, ground floor first floor second floor third floor then within that then you'll have okay let's say each floor has four apartments or four units so unit 1 2 3 4 4 then second floor unit 1 2 3 4 then within a unit okay you want rooms okay then you can have that as well that is also a good example wow. okay so got it so this ps is also used very much in apart from um uh, using it in manufacturing for um made to order kind of scenario it's also very much used in oil and gas industry it is used very much in the construction industry also um so like the example which you spoke just now the building that can be suitable there in the oil and gas industry usually they have wb structure for each oil well each well they'll have one uh, wbs element and then um they'll have use also investment management sometime uh, together with wbs element to keep track of uh, yearly how many new wells they are uh, uh, making okay so investment management it integrates to this project level and then you have another structure like this within investment management we were in there are multiple 
projects assigned to our investment program. We saw this, how the WBS elements are there, the based, phase-based. This is another one picture. Okay, okay, this is again a house construction. So delivery will based. It demonstrates the relationship between project deliverables. Deliverables can be products, services, or results like outcome. And the scope work to be executed. Like in our SAP projects, we have project deliverables, right? So they are they are not products. They are usually services or they are results. Can you give some example? In a SAP project, what are the deliverables we do? Yeah, or um, BB um, um, to be document. I Correct. To be document. That solution document. Then, yeah. then we have functional BPML. Correct. BPML is first. Then you have solution document. Then after that, we have unit testing. Correct. Configuration. We have you have got unit testing. We have. Yes, integration, yes. integration testing, then we have got UAT, then we have data migration, we have cut over, we have training, huh? correct? And then we have um, cut over, I mentioned, then you have training documents, then uh, the training itself, and then preparation for go live and go live and support, post go live support. So those are all project deliverables. So they are not actually products. So they can be services or, or results. Yeah. Scope, we know. So Kali, in, in that case, in that case, how the structure will be designed with an example, if you have, like here in, in case of construction of house, you have level one and elements, which are, you know, one is internal foundation, external and if we have 1.1 electrical, 1.2 mm -hmm. plumbing. So the, the same way how this, uh, uh, our project uh, deliverables can be. Uh, yes, yes, I, I will tell you. I'll, I'll take that example as well. So just uh, cover this quickly and then I'll give you the example for SAP project. So this construction house, this is very high level now internal works are what what are the external works now this they have not broken out down into floors or uh, room wise but they have just uh, very high level they've broken out into three parts internal work external work and what is the foundation work so within internal what you what all you have you have electrical works plumbing works you can have even plaster painting finishing works you can have internal ones then again in external they have masonry work building finishes foundation excavation and steel erection over here now what are the things you need how much budget you have okay and what is the work or uh, involved in that that we maintain here then what are resources like let's say they have mentioned here electrical contractor plumbing contractor and so on and this or usually this budget should be actually uh, broken up or if everything should roll up to this or usually this budget at the topmost WS level is distributed downwards. So this 215,000 uh, is distributed into 86, there's 46, 83. Then this 86 will again be broken down into this electrical and plumbing. So 25 plus 61 is coming as 86, correct? Then this 46 is 37 plus 9 and so on. This is good. Now we'll take that example. Let's say it's an implementation project. Just give me one minute. Thanks. 
So we have a SAP implementation project. So what we can do is we can break it down into phases. So one first phase will be now, if we look at the activate methodology, we have four phases. One is prepare, then second one is explore, then we have realize phase, and then we have a deploy phase. So those will be the four phases. Then in the prepare phase, we'll have project plan, and then we'll have, let's say, BPML. That will come in the first phase. Then we we'll have realize phase. So in the realize phase, you have system demo of what are the standard. Then you have fit gap workshops, and then you have solution documents, which is the uh, uh, business process document, uh, blueprint document, whatever you call it. Then the realize phase, we have configuration, we have um, custom uh, developments, we'll have uh, testing, unit testing, integration testing, and uh, UAT, let's say, user acceptance testing. Then uh, we also have data migration in that, let's say. But then in the deploy, we have cut over, then we have post go live support. So that is why how we'll break it up into the WBS structure from, for a SAP project from the deliverables point of view. Right, but but Kali, in the in that case, the the level one, uh, it will move. It it will not be moving parallelly. Once uh, the one will get completed, then only two can start. Then only three can start. Right. Yeah, but some activities can still be done parallelly. No, but in in this case. Uh, uh, once we we start uh, uh, the discussion, then we do the configuration. Then only we can do the unit testing, and after that only we can do the uh, UAT, right? Yes. One second. See this. We are talking about WBS structure. Now, when we go into activities, I'll show you in the next session activities. So in the activities, we have relationship. So which activity will be done first, which will be done later on, and what is the sequence of those activities? So that is, is the part of uh, the activities part, which is network and activities. In here, if you see here, oh, here there is very high level connection as a structure format. But here, now there is, we cannot see if internal, this internal, how is the dependency of internal part to foundation or to external, correct? Hello? No, but without, without foundation, we cannot have internal and external, right? Yes, yes, that is what I'm saying. So this is just WBS structure. So here they're independent. There is no relationship like the internal is cannot start till you complete foundation. Yes. The external right? cannot start till you complete the foundation or internal work or the vice versa. So this relationship is for that you have this activities, network activities, and this relationship and binding and how much duration it will take, uh, which, uh, which are predecessor activities, which are successor, which will be following activities. So that is done in networks and activities. So that we will see in that session. W, but WBS st structure is still a must to have because the activities will li get linked to this because we have see we have this budget you see here, Budget figures, these budget yeah, figures yeah. are given at WBS element level. They're not given at activity level. Okay. 
So we'll come to that. I'll take that example and we will see it, how it is done when we learn activities and then we go into the system, that time we'll stay, take that up, okay? So Khalid, in short, we must have WBS as our primary thing yes. for the PS structure. Correct, we must have. Or is it somewhere we have a scenario like we can direct jump to the activities or means we can ignore the WBS on the top level and proceed further right. on that side? That is very rare, but I will take that example also. Usually when we do this assembly processing type of scenario, wherein we have a sales order and from sales order, we are triggering projects as per what assembly we want to uh, create. That time we have a predefined structure, predefined network. And then once you can, once you create a sales order, then in a background, a network gets created, which is as per the standard defined activities. And then the material assignment and assemblies get created with that network act. Um, which is predefined. So I'll take that example as well. But in most of the cases, if you say 90, 95% cases, WBS structure will be a must. Activities by itself or network by itself will not exist without a WBS structure. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And we'll take that, uh, uh, how we link activities and all that we'll see when we go into the activities section. Now, okay, uh, this, okay, this is again construction of a house. This is another face-based WBS. So here they are doing construction of house. Uh, based on phases. So design is one phase, procurement another phase, construction or execution is another phase, inspection, the quality inspection is another phase and turnover is another phase. And then this is level one WBS elements. All these are level two WBS element. These are level three WBS elements. So two WBS below design, these are level three. Again, these Electrical, plumbing, HVAC are level three WBS. Again, this construction, below construction, interior, exterior are two level three WBS elements and so on. Now they're just explaining here, level one has five elements each. This is not actually level one, this should be level two. It has five elements. Each of these elements are typical phases of a project. The level two, elements are unique deliverables in these in each phase. So these are the deliverables like permits, drawings and so on. Here they are mentioning it as level two, but in SAP PS, this itself, the construction of house itself, we create it as the first level WBS element. So these are level two WBS elements then these are level three WBS elements for our understanding in the SAP PS. The level one WBS elements is usually called root WBS element, R-O-O-T, root WBS element. And most of the cases, there is only one uh, level one WBS elements, but there can be some case instance where there can be multiple level one WBS element also. That is also possible. Okay, so let us just go through. This is again the slide which is explaining this picture. So regardless okay, of the type of WBS, the lower level of elements are all deliverables. Notice elements in different legs have the same name. What is that same name? Phase-based WBS requires work associated with multiple elements divided into work unique to each level one WBS element. 
WS dictionary is created to describe the work in each WS element. So that dictionary and all that is all construction or manufacturing terminology, which for okay, what is this design? What is procurement and construction mean? They'll have their own dictionary. What is this 1.1 permits and drawings? They'll have the details maintained for that. So we saw this WBS structure, uh, either it is phase or deliverable, and it describes a certain task or a partial task, which can be subdivided further. So there is no, in SAP itself, uh, there is no limitation on how many levels you go further. And I was explaining, normally we go to most of the projects have till level four, five, max six, seven, they will go, but not further than that in most of the projects. But SAP itself doesn't bind you into how many levels you can go, you can go even further if required. So this we'll see in SAP how to create uh, WBS element. Then what there is something called project definition, which is nothing but a project. So we'll see that as well in the system. Yes. Let me. Hello. Hello. Yeah, got it. Yeah, you're seeing the screen, right? Yeah, yeah, we can see your SAP screen. SAP yeah. screen. Uh, okay. I will just take you through this, and after that, you can try logging in with your side as well. Okay. So SAP PS project system. This is available both in the logistics as well as, well as the accounting part. Okay. Can you see? Hello? Yes, yes, we can yeah, see. Yeah. No, it is both side accounting as, as well as logistics. So we can enable. So both people, uh, even people who are from logistics side, they can also take up project system. Those who are from accounting side, like we have FI consultant also here, right? So they can also take up project system. Okay. Then just let me take you through what is there in project system, what are the sub modules, and then I will take you into the screen so we have basic data then this is the project where we create project now these documents if you are aware in project there will be multiple documents which you need to store and uh, you need to use those documents be it drawings then can be specifications and there can be like even our SAP drawings, we, uh, SAP uh, blueprint documents or solution documents, flow charts, and so on. Those are very important. So they need to be stored. So there is a module in SAP called DMS. You've heard of this document management system. Yeah. Yeah. So we can use, make use of these. Uh, this module document management system to store those documents and you can attach these documents to WBS elements or activities even if you have used other modules like uh, those who have done production pp then they can do it in production orders you can attach it to material master uh, even to po's purchase orders you can attach these documents now, uh, those who have done plan maintenance, they'll be aware of what are notifications. Okay. Then 
then again, collaboration is meant for documents, publishing folders, uh, transferring folders and all. Now the important ones which we normally use are these ones, the basic data, project, we use financials. Uh, so within financials, there are cost planning, budgeting, we we'll look at that in detail. Then there is an important one in uh, yes is progress tracking. So progress. So there is there will be activity confirmation, progress tracking. Then there is dates, which is schedule of the project. So how to prepare a project schedule, then how to monitor the project schedule that we will see then resources. Now resources are nothing but your work center and capacity in work center. So how to plan, plan that. And also important is materials. So how you do material planning. And with for project also there is a MRP, like we do MRP for plants, we can do for M in MM for a plant or PP for plant, we can do MRP for a project also. You can see MRP can be done for a sales order as well. We'll have a look at that. Then for execution, how we can, uh, from the materials point of view, you have goods issue, goods received, uh, after PO, we have this issue is received and for services also we have got service entry sheet, then approval of the service entry sheet. So we'll have a look at that. And there is some feature of monitoring dates like what is your PO date? What is the PR date, PO date, goods received date? So those dates we can monitor. And there is some uh, Transactions for that, even you have this project oriented procurement, which is ProMan. And then there is lastly information system, which are the reports. So there are several reports available in project system. So these broad classification are these structure reports. Then you have uh, list reports, which are individual or you see list of the Projects you want to see, project definitions, list of WBS elements, list of networks, activities, you can go and see here. You want to see the structure report, then you can see over here. Let's just let me do one thing. I want to let's say, see the technical names. So I just, So then there are cost financial reports, plan based. And there can be these are hierarchical are the structure reports, and there are cost element based reports also. So what are cost elements? FI folks will know that. Anybody want to give it a try? Hello. Sorry, Colin. What are cost elements? Cost elements are the elements where we book the cost. Generally, it will be GL. And in S4, we have got uh, uh, to create uh, the cost element other than primary cost also as GL accounts. Right? That is there. That is not in S4. That was before S4 also. Those are primary cost elements and then some are secondary cost element, right? So cost elements are nothing but those are GLs. But in the S4, now the difference is you don't have to create separately in CO. Cost element directly from the FI side, you can create cost element with your GL account. Okay. 
and there are different classification of uh, GL accounts. The major types are the primary cost element or their secondary cost element. So wherever we book the cost and revenues, those are primary cost elements. Okay. So in CEO controlling, the GL accounts will be call, called as cost elements. So we shouldn't get uh, very nervous there when uh, somebody talks about cost elements. So they are nothing but their GL account only. But in the CO, the terminology is cost element because based on what is the nature of the cost incurred, they will classify into different types of cost elements. So there, there are cost element based reports, then there are budget. Uh, base reports, uh, like wh what is the original budget, what is the changed budget, what is the current budget, what is the cost we have incurred, so that we can see in this budget reports, how much is the budget available now that we can see here. Now, same cost reports, similarly, it will come in revenue reports also. So whenever there is a project which has revenues uh, involved, then we will look at revenue reports instead of the cost reports. So revenue reports will include even cost, it will include, but apart from cost, it will also have revenues. So in this case, the PS project is the WBS elements is linked to the sales order or the SD module to have your revenues. Okay. So now let us just look at one second. So I want to take you in SAP PS project builder or CJ20N. This is the transaction which will be the most commonly used transaction. This transaction, you can put it in the favorites and keep because for most of the things, this will be used. You can do your project creation from here, WBS creation, you can do your uh, uh, network activity creation, material planning, almost uh, everything required for project system, those transactions which we can do in the project builders, so you can just keep this in favorite. Now I will just take you through a WBS structure first how a WBS structure looks like and how do we go about creating it. So I will first show one structure and then we will create a structure after that. We'll see your access and then we'll take. Okay, so this is the screen. I've just opened one existing structure for now. So this first, this is a project definition. Just let me, Close this everything. So this is a project definition. I'm in the project definition detailed screen over here. Okay. So there are three parts to this screen. You can see one here is the structure overview. You can expand here this structure. So you can expand this like this from here. I can collapse it from this button. Okay, expand it from this button. Then this is the detailed screen. So wherever my cursor is, okay, this is depending on where your cursor is. My cursor is in the project definition. So it is showing me the details of the project definition here. If I keep my cursor on the WBS element, now all these small triangles, now there is a tooltip also here. 
for this triangles, yellow triangles are WBS elements. If I keep my cursor here, it is showing me it is a project definition. Okay. So now my cursor is at project proposal. So now it is showing me the details of the WBS element over here. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I was taking you through the project builder. So we are looking at this. So let me just collapse this everything. So now this over here, you see the project structure in this window. There are three windows in this screen. Okay. So and this one is the detail screen. So now this is the project structure. My cursor is here. So I'm seeing the details of the project structure. Okay. So here you have got basic data, like we have got first. Which controlling area, CO area it is. This project is for which company code, uh, plant, you can have business areas. In some companies, they'll keep profit center also. Some companies, they'll have function area as well. And then there is a currency, which project currency is going to have. Then for a project definition, we'll have a start date and finish date. Okay. What will be the start date of this project? What will be the finish date of this project? Now, what is the factory calendar? Now you can use different calendars in project. So it usually is tied to a plant. Okay. So in this case, there is zero one factory calendar use. So you can have many uh, different factory calendars and you can use the appropriate one for the that project. Then Kali, the, this uh, currency will be company code currency or controlling area currency? Now there is a setting involved for this. Whether you want to use company code currency or the controlling currency. So I show you that setting in the project system there is a project profile and there will be a plan profile so in that profile you will see this how to use the currency okay Khalid my question is I can edit the currency here right no now once you have now this is grayed out field now I cannot edit the currency no if I am creating yeah, that time you can edit the currency. But that also depends on what is the setting behind, whether you are allowed to edit the currency or not. Let me just say, okay, let me, one second, let me just open on screen, create one new project. Okay, wow. I'm just trying to create new project here. Now, let me just put some, okay, I'm just trying to create new project here. I will just use one of the, this is very important setting, which is project profile. Okay, we'll see that uh, later on. So project profile setting it, in this project profile configuration, all these different profiles you see here below are maintained in a project profile. So now when I once I enter a project profile, these will get filled up automatically. We saw based on that project profile, standard project profile, these budget profile, planning profile, AT, this got all filled up over here. Okay. Now I will just look at that currency. So in here, based on the project profile, the company code and the controlling area of project currency, Euro has got filled up automatically. Correct? Now let's say I want to change this. This was the question, correct? Yes. yes. Let's say I want to change it into USD.
So now I'm just saving it. So system has allowed me to change it to the project currency USD. Okay. But it is editable last, right? No, right now it is editable, but once you have done some transactions on this project, you will not, you will not be able to change it afterwards. We may have done some cost planning or you have done some cost booking onto the postings onto the project, then you are not able to change the currency afterwards. You mean the first level of WBS will be created, then it became frozen kind of thing? No, not naturally. One thing I'm just taking. Try that. So now I'm going to create new WBS element. Okay. So now there are multiple ways of doing this. I am just showing you one of the way. So I have created one project definition. Okay. C-1001. This is the project number of the project code. Usually what happens for the first level, the level one WBS, we keep the same code as the project definition code. Okay. Most of the cases we do that. Hmm? I'm just going to name it. Now, what it will do, it will take the characteristics from the project profile and the project definition. So the currency for this it will come, it will take it from the project definition, which is US dollar. So it, in the assignment section, if you go, it has taken currency US dollar. Even it has copied everything, company code, business area, plant, factory calendar, currency from the project definition. Okay, I'm saving this. See, still this has not become grayed out at the project definition level. Now it is possible, see what happens. One project, there can even be multiple currencies involved. It can be sometimes same company. Even you can have one project with WBS from different companies. That is also possible but very rarely used. But you can have from another currency. That is also possible that we can do. I will just show you one example. So this was level one. Let me say it is just both US dollar right now. Now I will have, let me, now, there is something very important here called project coding mask. Okay. In this case, this project coding mask is blank. So I'm not using any particular project coding mask. This I will explain you when we go into the configuration more in detail. I'll explain you what is project coding mask, how it helps us. So usually we keep codes as the same and just the last, like the succeeding numbers we change okay, or we add to it. So this one, I'm just going to make it level two. This also I'm going to make one more level two. I'm going to have, let's say, three level two WS elements I'm going to have now. This I'll make it three. Right. Let me just make this SAP project, let's say. Okay. 
and this are my phases. Prepare as per the activate. So these are all in US dollar right now. This also I have make it. And then we're going to save this. Okay. So now in this case, we have got all USD, but it is possible. Now I'm going to show you another view, WBS element overview. Uh, Khalid, before that, just having one small query. You yes. just told that multiple company code can be assigned to a project. Hmm. Can you show me any one yeah. of them? Like yes. Or See, if it this... would be defined, then at which level it would be defined? At the WBS. At the WBS? WBS. See now every child WBS. Child WBS. You can have see one you know, everywhere there is triple zero one is the company code, correct? Mm -hmm. The company code. Mm -hmm. This is company code. I'm just expanding this. In the project definition, also it was triple zero one. These are WBS element. Everywhere is triple zero one. Now I can have different company code. Let's say I want to have triple zero three here. This is triple zero one. I want to have again triple zero three here. So this is possible. Okay, now we are going to choose the plant. Just take out the findings. Some controlling area. Only just controlling area means much. Because this controlling company code is triple zero three is not attached to assigned to CO area, triple zero one, it seems, okay. So I'm not assigned, but if it is assigned to triple zero three, then I can change this. Let me just try any other company. No, it is not a list. Okay, but it is possible to have different company codes in one project, but I told it will not be very common that you will have projects with, uh, with multiple company codes. This is WBS elements. It is actually WBS element of a different company codes. Okay. But what exactly logical it means if you have a multiple company code in a single project? See what happens because normally, normally whatever we are doing. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yep, Normally, it will be only one company code only, but if you know transfer pricing scenario, in that case, usually they will have multiple company codes in one project. And then there will be, will be transfer pricing but from one company to another company. Okay. In that case- But in that case, which one would be our main company for the ones which is already assigned as a project level or as a WBS level? Is it a deliverable um, level or a project builder level? It doesn't make any difference because at the project builder, which is the project definition, I will just make this change here again. One second, huh? See the transactions are being posted at WBS element level. They are not posted at this 
wb at the project level okay this uh, project definition is there to just bind all my wbs elements the structure together this is a framework the project definition this is a definition correct mm -hmm. so this is mm -hmm. a framework for my project it gives me default values okay like what is the project profile i'm using based on that okay what will be the behavior like what budget profile this all these profiles will be there and you have organization details which again get defaulted into the wbs elements which i create below but by itself a project definition doesn't have transactions posted to it it is always at the wbs elements whether level 1 2 3 where the transactions are posted so even if you have one company here at the uh, project structure level project definition level sorry not project structure the project definition level if i have one company but let's say triple zero one but my wbs elements is having another company which is let's say triple zero three so my transactions will get posted in company code triple zero three not in triple zero one okay then what about the settlement part again that uh, same triple zero three only to go so that is why i'm saying that very rarely we will see that there will be other company codes involved in a project but there may be some instances where in an organization within the same controlling area there are different company codes and we make use of multiple company codes in one project but there that will be very rarely used in a transfer pricing situation usually they are used let's say it's a multi, it's a project <coughs> involving multiple let's say within india we have two three company codes or it's an international project let's say having two three countries involved okay and let's say this is some uh, project based on some deliverables some deliverable is happening in usa one project i want to manage it as one project this is you happening in usa not by geography but the company code okay geography is immaterial here in a usa company code uh, another uh, deliverable is happening it's let's say in uk company code and another let's say um uh, there's the offshore delivery uh, component also which is happening in india company code in that case you may have this type of structure with multiple company codes so the cost will get booked in those different company codes but <laughs> as a project you will see the Cost. let's say this us part was 1 million uk part was 2 million let's say and the in india part was 4 million so totally as a project i can see 1 plus 2 plus 4 that is 7 million as one project okay. got it Mm -hmm. I got it. But uh, Khalid, I just want to have this kind of example in our upcoming sessions, actually. I mean, if you have a multiple company code link, how it will be get totally settled and all those processes which are being involved in this particular scenario. Yes. So, sure. Because this is quite important from our current deployment also. Okay. So, so you give me yeah. what is the case, we will take it up. Based yeah, sure. On no, the case is quite simple, Khalid. Like mm -hmm. if you inside the project we just want to have multiple company code being assigned either it would be at different wbs level or is a project structure level no, no, it is at WBS, wbs level only because you see here at a project definition you have one company but this is immaterial because i am not doing, going to do my posting here this is meant just for defaulting the company code and plant business area to my uh, WBS elements which I am going to create in this project definition. 
Yeah, correct. But we just want to have one end-to-end -end scenario for this uh, particular kind of scenario. Okay, that's what I mean. Khalid, uh, sure. will not be the prerequisite that uh, both the company codes should be in the same controlling area, right? That is a prerequisite. You got it right. That is a prerequisite. Yes. But of course, we are going to talk about the same controlling area, right? It is uh, this. It's a, it's a same group. Let's say I am with, uh, uh, for example, uh, let's say this is Reliance. Okay, I'm in Reliance, so I have Reliance. UA, I am a Reliance as a controlling area. I have got one company code, but uh, one controlling area. Sorry, not company code. One controlling area, but I have got multiple company codes within India. I could have twenty company codes. Okay. And overseas, I can have, let's say, USA, I can have two, three company codes. In Europe, I can have two, three company codes. Middle East, I can have more company codes. But as a controlling area, I will be one group. So I will be having single uh, controlling area. Most of the situation, it is like that in most of the companies. Correct, no? Uh, yes, Khaled. We have F FI consultant. Uh, who was that? Manish? Yeah, this is Srikant. Srikant, no. Srikant, I'm right, no? Just correct me if I'm wrong somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we were talking about WBS. Okay. So this is actually project definition. As I was telling, this is a framework for the project uh, WBS elements and activities which I'm going to create within my project structure. So as I explained, the project profile is very important. The project profile has all these profiles within that. So when we go into the configuration and see, we will see each and every um, profile, budget profile, time profile, uh, interest profile, investment profile, what all, all these things, network profile, we'll see all this thing later. Then, as I was talking to you, statistical, those who have done FICO, they'll tell us what is statistical. You've heard of statistical? Shrikan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it will be used on reporting purpose. Hmm? Correct. So you do this posting on this. So there will not be real, the financial posting will not be real financial posting on this, but it will be just for a reporting purpose or statistical purpose. That is when you use this uh, statistical. Most of our project, we will not have this statistical ticked. It will be unticked over here, okay? Now, we, I told you about project stock. See, there is a plant stock, P-L-A-N-T, plant stock, and there is something called project stock. If there is some materials I'm purchasing, and I want to uh, have it for a particular uh, WBS element only. I don't want other projects like, see, uh, I have a site and there are multiple projects happening or even there is a, a manufacturing unit at that site within that plant. And I don't want others to use my uh, materials which I have procured for my use. So I was talking about project stock. See, if I'm Purchasing, I will just give you some example. Let's say is I it am... something like what we have reservation in our services side? Yes. Or purchase requisition kind of stuff. Yes. But purchase requisition is for non-stock one. Purchase so requisition is for non-stock. For stock items, usually you have reservations. Reservation, yeah. Yes. Similar kind of thing is there for the project site? Or how is it yes, yes, but reservation you use to issue internal materials like you have uh, a stock in your plant and then you issue it to that 
or against that reservation correct mm -hmm. yeah but apart from that see you you are issuing but i have got my goods in the plant but anybody it is first uh, come first serve right i ask for some material <laughs> the store guy is going to issue it to me <coughs> correct mm -hmm. okay but i have i have purchased it for me and i don't want the store guy to issue it to any other project or even to any other uh, let's say there is some work going on the production side in the production floor okay i don't want it to uh, get issued to any other production order it could be anything uh, to a plant maintenance order or uh, even to another project ps project i don't want it to get issued i want it to for my own uh, consumption that is when i use project stock it is actually called special stock okay hello yeah so in okay. that case the store guy cannot issue so it is a special stock within the plant stock see my plant is which okay. number what is the plant number here now okay, my plant somehow... is 001 right yeah mm -hmm. plant is 001 and let's say there is a even a storage location in a plant and this is let's say i was asking for my i was looking at that project rotor project right so that rotor chef come i wanted some three num three rotors in my project in one of my activities hmm? so those three rotors have come and another project is asking it now so the stores guy will issue it to that other project i don't want that to happen okay so in that case i will use this i will use this project stock so what happens is that stock whatever has come from my purchase order will stay as a special stock against that particular ws elements for which i procured let's say i have procured it for this ws element c1 1001-02 okay so that rotors of three numbers which i have procured will be shown in the plant stock under this ws element c1001 right. which is which is a special stock and it cannot get issued to any other project or to any other uh, reservation okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is the control that is when we have to use project stock if you want to keep that control yeah so khalid what about other two radio buttons non valuated and valuated yeah. what is the functionality so no project stock means we don't want to keep control on the project stock that is no project stock once i want to keep the um control on the project stock i will use either valuated or non valuated okay most of the cases we will use valuated in non valuated stock what happens is every transaction is not recorded from the cost side only the goods at the time of good receipt the posting of the financial posting will happen in non valuated stock in valuated stock even you are doing good receipt you are doing goods issue the financial posting are going to happen that is meant up by valuated stock we will see this example when we do some transactions when you will create a project stock and we will do some transactions we will see this what is the use of this three radio buttons okay now this also has to be configured or this has also come from my project profile in the profile it was configured that it should be no project stock okay so it has come by default this one now it has not allowed me to select valuated stock because of the configuration behind it. now if i go to administration screen this is just created by and changed by nothing much over here then you have a uh, long text where you can put detailed description then there are some user fields now user fields Khalid, sorry 
in yes. the basic data below the statistical there is an integrated planning what is that okay i will explain you this is in control this one right yes yes okay this integrated planning just let me one second no let me check because there are two types of interning let me be like planning okay this has something to do with uh, your co controlling okay in controlling what happens is there is cost center accounting in cost center we plan uh, usually those who are doing production planning pp they will come across this what they mean by uh, planning for cost centers there is plan cost centers and activity types okay so in that activity type and cost center planning they will plan what is the rate of all those activity types so there this is used this integrated planning but that is independent to the cost center and activity type actually where we give the kp26 planned values correct, in, correct. Um, yes yes in kp26 what yes. that has to do with this project systems and uh, how it will yeah so this in will project have systems link. also we are going uh, where we have um work centers like we have in pp we have work centers similarly work centers we can use in ps also in the activities for the work performed it could be machinery you can use work centers for machinery or it can be even used for manpower like the resources skilled resources unskilled resources different types of uh, uh, like it could be engineers it could be technicians or different trades you can use work center and activity type will be maintained for the unit rate for the what is their unit rate for each of this uh, type of uh, uh, people the the labor like whether engineers or technicians or the skilled laborers so it is a similar concept as the pp in the ps also that is when you will use integrated planning so what happens is this will then for that the prerequisite is you need to do this integrated planning with cost center that is one prerequisite in the co version it needs to be activated and then you will settle this integrated orders to the cost center but i have not seen this integrated planning used much in the ps side okay kavi but this is if we really need to do we can check with our co consultant in detail about integrated planning and we can consult them whether we need to use integrated planning because this has impact on the co side more rather than within ps okay so okay, uh, okay. so this was that and then okay then there the sap has given us some list of some user fields which we can use uh, and there is a field key you see here this field key field key configuration there are these four general fields two date fields two check boxes and four numeric fields which we can configure using this field key and then depending on that this will change like for this field key 0001 all these four are enabled okay and uh, let's say if i go for another one work clearance management now here only two are enabled and we can change the label also here template template type 
earlier for 0, 0, 1, but default, it is text 1, text 2, text 3. But I can do that changes in using this work clearance manage in a field key configuration. I can do changes. I can activate certain fields. I can deactivate fields. I can change labels. So that is called use in user fields. This user field are available at project definition level also. <coughs> at WBS element level also they are available. And even at network activity level also they are available. Now we are at 12 o'clock. I want you to check whether you are able to access the system so that next time we, you can do uh, these exercise. Can we do that now? Or so that I can help you in case you are not able to access the system? Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.